Hey there everybody. I thought I would do another video. This time of History Maker Baseball. There are a couple of uh, videos out there already to kind of explain how the game is played and the uniqueness of the game. Uh, and also uh, the different things that the company provides and what they offer as far as sets. But I thought I'd go ahead and do a quick run through just through a game here from the 1977 uh, season set. I'm just doing an exhibition game. I'm not. This is not an actual game that was played this season. But I picked out the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees to be played at Yankee Stadium. And I'm going to do this just to demonstrate and give another video and another take on History Maker Baseball by Play.com. Uh, kind of wet the appetite for when they're going to release their 2015. Uh, season early for the uh, for the players uh, rated this year. Uh, I know the season not over, but they pretty much, uh, based on their ratings, they're not using statistical numbers, so they can do this. Uh, the ratings pretty pretty much are not going to change between now and the end of the season. So, without further ado, I thought I'd get started. Uh, this video is made with the assumption that you're at least familiar with History Maker Baseball and how it gets played. Uh, if you're not, then uh, Steve Tower and Al Wilson did excellent videos, each one of them, uh, on this particular game. So I thought I'd do my own, just for the heck of it. And as we pan to the field, you will see that we are at Yankee Stadium. 1977 Red Sox against the Yankees. The starting pitcher for the Yankees is right-hander Ed Figueroa. The starting pitcher for the Red Sox is the spaceman, left-hander Bill Lee. We've got uh, our score sheet over here, and I'll go through the lineups in a minute. So let's start with the Red Sox batting order. Leading off and playing shortstop is Rick Burleson. Hitting second and playing in center field is Fred Lynn. Batting third and catching Carlton Fisk. Hitting cleanup in left field, Jim Rice. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, Carl Yastrzemski. Batting sixth, the boomer, playing first base, George Scott. Batting seventh, the right fielder, Dwight Evans. Batting eighth and playing third base, Butch Hobson. And batting ninth and playing second base, Danny Doyle. That is the starting lineup for the Red Sox. And I have designated the hot hitter to be Fred Lynn and the cold hitter to be George Scott. So if that comes up on a uh, right now roll, but then we'll go to those hot and cold if they're at that bat. During that time, that could affect the gameplay. Leading off for the Yankees will be center fielder Mickey Rivers. Batting second is the left fielder Roy White. Hitting third is the team captain, Thurman Munson. Batting cleanup, I've oh, got that backwards. Batting cleanup will be first baseman, Chris Chambliss. Batting fifth is Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. Hitting sixth is Lou Pinella, and Pinella is the designated hitter in this game. Greg Nettles is at third base and he will hit seventh. Willie Randolph will play second base and hit eighth. And to all Boston fans, Bucky Bleeping Dent will bat ninth and play short. That, of course, happened in 78, not 77. All right, and over here we have our bullpen and bench for the Yankees. We have our bullpen and bench for the Red Sox. And then we also have our manager strategy cards that may come into play. The umpires for today's game at home plate is Larry Barnett. At first base is Vic Voltaggio. At second base is Jim Evans. And at third base is Durwood Merrill, the crew chief. And as you see, again, we're at Yankee Stadium. Props to Al Wilson for uh, providing these stadium backdrops that we can use to add a little more realism to the game. And these are available for free on the play.com website under free stuff, oddly enough. 
Okay, so without further ado, we are ready to go. Got my score sheet, got my dice, got the play booklet, and this is the main page that we're going to be using, uh, at least for the most of the at-bats, uh, at unless we're directed to another chart or another page, I should say, in the booklet, because everything happens in this booklet. So, without further ado, the Boston Red Sox exhibition at Yankee Stadium. Rick Burleson to lead it off against Ed Figueroa. And the opening salvo looks like this. All right. We get a one, four, six. Because remember, the dice are red lowest to highest. The color does not matter uh, on most rolls. There's only one roll where that really matters. But in most cases, it's just lowest to highest. And of course, we have the decider die that's either a dot or a blank. In this case, it being a dot. So, one, four, six. So we come over to the game booklet. Game booklet, one, four, six. And it's gonna ask, Flash, does Ed Figueroa have the Flash quality? He does not. Next, it asks, Champion, does Rick Burleson have the Champion quality? He does not. So therefore, it is a ground ball to second base. So, Rick Burleson starts out the ball game. 4-3, ground out to second base. And we're underway from Yankee Stadium from the Bronx. George Steinbrenner is at least happy through one at bat. That'll bring up Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn. This roll is a 1-2-6. The last one was a 146. This is a 126. 126 asks, is the pitcher fresh? Well, it's only the second batter of the game, so obviously he is fresh. And therefore, with the pitcher being fresh on a 126, it is a line out to the second baseman. If I can find that, and 126. There it is right there. Line out second baseman. So that is an L4 for out number two. And Lynn is done, and that'll bring up Pudge Fisk to see if he can get anything going before the inning is over. So Pudge Fisk standing in against Figueroa, and here we go. The roll is 1-1-3, one, 1-1-3, one, three. One, one, three. the solder die is a blank. 1-1-3, one, one, it asks, is Figueroa an ace? He is not. Is Fisk a slugger? No, he is not. He is a semi-home run king. So Fisk being a slugger does not help either. So the last choice on the 113 says single to center field. Star, star. So single to center field. So they don't go quietly. Now the star, star says that a sad sack or a home run king strikes out. Fisk is a semi-home run king. The decider die says that this bat he is not a home run king, so he does not strike out. His single to center stands, so he is at first base with two outs. And designated, I'm sorry, and left fielder Jim Rice is up. Jim Rice. So let's see what Rice can do here. He does a 2-4-5, so a 2, on the column 2, 2-4-5, two, it asks, is Figueroa a star? Figueroa is a star with a dot, so that means he's a semi-star. The decider die says in this bat he is not a star. So we go to the next column on the 2-4-5. And I'm sorry, I was looking at 255. This is 245. 245 is blank. So 245 asks, is Jim Rice a hero? According to this, he is not a hero. So the final out is a pop out to second base in red. But this is the third out of the inning. So the inning is over. But when the Red Sox come up to bat in the top of the second, we will go to the experience chart because that out ended in red. So, after the end of half an inning, it is Boston nothing, the Yankees coming to bat. 
So for the Yankees, Mickey Rivers will lead it off against the left-hander Bill Lee. A lot of teams in 77 stacked left-handed pitching against the heavily left-handed hitting Yankees. Uh, so here we go. First pitch to Rivers is 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6 five, six. Two, five, six ask, is Bill Lee a struggler? He is not a struggler. 256 ask is the batter Mickey Rivers a champion? Is he a champion? And he is a champion, semi-champion, but in this case the decider die says no. So therefore we're going to infield drama. Infield drama. Infield drama is on this page. And we're going to take two of the dice and the decider die. Roll those and see what we get and compare it to the infield drama chart. So we get a 3-5 with the desired die being a yes. 3-5. 3-5. Third baseman. 3-5. Says is the third baseman iron. Well, we have to check on Butch Hobson. He is semi-iron. The cider die says he is iron. So he is iron, which means he's not able to make the routine play. Ball rose past to, for a single to left field. So a single to left field for Mickey Rivers to start the ball game because of the fact that Butch Hobson was semi-iron and the cider die comes into play early on, showing that he is, in fact, iron. And therefore, he has given up a base hit that other third baseman may have gotten to. Roy White. Roy White. Roy White. Two, three, four. So Roy White, two, three, four. Runners on base. How about that? We just had a runner on base in Mickey Rivers. So we go to plate drama. We had infield drama. Now we have plate drama. Same routine. Two dice plus the decider. And we get a 5-5 five, five with the decider die as a yes. Plate drama, 5-5. Five, five. Control pitcher. Control pitcher. Bill Lee is a control pitcher even without the decider die. 5-5. Five, five. Control pitcher. Pinpoint pitch. Pinpoint pitch. Which means they caught him looking for a strike. Doesn't say strike out, just says strike. So that's one strike on the batter. If the bit pitcher did not have control, it would have been a wild pitch. So that's why it's limited to the one uh, swing there versus the hole at bat. So Roy White back in the box again. No harm, no foul. So here we go. Six, six, six with the decider die. Boy, that's not good for the pitching staff usually. Six, six, six. It says, is the pitcher Bill Lee an ace? No, he is not an ace. He's workman, semi workman, and control pitcher. Is the batter Roy White a sad sack? No, he's not. He's a semi slugger. Deep drive glove. So we've got a Glove option, which is another chart, micro chart called Glove. And what we're going to do is take one of the dice. All you need is one because it's a one through six uh, result. So we're going to roll one die and roll it and compare it to the glove chart. Oops, that was a bad roll. Let's try it again. Okay, that's a six. So the glove chart, six, says... Home run gone into the bleachers. So Roy White has hit a two-run home run. And that scores Mickey Rivers. And it's just like that. It's 2 nothing Yankees because of two deficiencies on the Red Sox. That being Butch Hobson being semi-iron instead of just being a normal fielder. That cost him a hit. And then Bill Lee... Not being an ace cost the chance to negate that home run. 
So just like that is two to nothing before the Red Sox even get settled in the field. Steinbrenner is happy. Billy Martin is well he's happy, he just can't tell it because he can't tell about the look on his face. Anyway, here is Thurman Munson, the captain of the Yankees, to lead off or to start off again after that home run. Nobody out. Two nothing Yankees and the pitch. And we get a three four five. So a three four five ask, is it an iron catcher? Fisk is the catcher, but Fisk, I don't believe he is an iron, he is, he's actually semi-gold, so that part of the equation does not compute, as a robot once said. Iron catcher, no. Go to the next entry, which is good eye. Does Munson have a good eye? He does not. He's actually semi-eager. So 345 says he strikes out. So Thurman Munson with a strikeout for out number one. And that was in blue, so we go to the right now chart for hot and cold. And wouldn't you know it, the next batter, Chris Chambliss, is our designated hot player. But Bill Lee is also hot because he just struck out Munson. So we have a hot pitcher versus a hot batter. So let's see what the hot, who is hotter. So hot pitcher against hot batter. We roll two dice plus the decider. And it's a 2-2 with a blank on the decider die. And the 2-2 on baseball right now. 2-2 asks, is it a cold pitcher? Well, no. Bill Lee is a hot pitcher because he just struck out Munson, even though he did give the two-run homer. So he's not a cold pitcher. If he was, it says shaky pitch, knock deep toward left center field for the fence. Otherwise, it's a line out to third base. So Chambliss, trying to go the opposite way, lines it to Butch Hobson for out number two. Two down, base is empty. And Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, steps in. And we get a 366 with the decider die as a yes. So 366 to start the decider die, yes. 366. The pitching option is blank. It is not a pinch hitter. So we get a fly out to center field. So a fly out to center field. And on the score sheet, we see the fly out to center field. And after one inning, it is the Yankees two and Boston nothing. All right, everybody, I'm back after a break. Uh, to cut down the length of this video, I went ahead and played um, innings two through seven. When we stopped after the first inning, the Yankees were up two nothing thanks to the home run by Roy White. But a roll of six, six, six. Had, by Denny Doyle has caused Denny Doyle to hit a three-run home run in the top of the second to give the Red Sox a 3-2 lead. Leading off the top of the fourth, Yastrzemski via a 1-1-1 one, one, one roll hit a home run and that put the Red Sox up 4-3. to three. In the bottom of the fourth, Chris Chambliss led off with a triple Chris Chambliss led for the triple, and then he was driven in by Greg Nettles, who singled there. Uh, Randolph doubled behind Nettles, but Nettles was stranded at third. So after four innings, it was four to three Red Sox. As we go to the sixth inning, sixth inning got interesting. Again, leading off the inning, Jim Rice, home run. Put the, Yankee, uh, put the Red Sox up 5-3. to three. And then a barrage of hits. Two singles in a row. Followed by a fielder's choice ground out. Drove in a run. And then another fielder's choice. I'm sorry, a single by Hobson. Drove in a run. And then that chased Figueroa. Tidrow came in. Gave up a fielder's choice ground out. They could not turn the double play. So Denny Doyle drove in his fourth run with a ground out 
and that put the Red Sox up by the score of 7-3. to three. Then recently here in the bottom of the seventh, Bucky Dent did a one-out double, and then he scored on Roy White's single to cut the lead to 7-4 to four after seven innings, and that is where we are. Dick Tidro has pitched an inning and two-thirds in relief so far, and he's really given up nothing. He struck out three um, and has not given up a hit. He did give up the fielder's choice ground out, but that run was charged to Figueroa. Figueroa's line, five and a third, gave up seven runs, three home runs. Bill Lee has pitched seven innings, and he's going to be lifted as we start the eighth. He pitched seven innings, gave up nine hits and four runs, but we have... Uh, Bullpen action for the Red Sox. Looks like Bob Stanley is loosening, and he may be coming in in the eighth inning. So I'm going to go ahead and play the eighth and ninth innings out and see if anything else happens. Leading off in the top of the eighth is Carl Yastrzemski. It'll be Yastrzemski, Scott, and Evans. Do up. So here is Carl Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski, 2-3-6. So a 2-3-6 for Yastrzemski. 2-3-6. It's asking about double control for Tidro. He does not have that. He just has control, not double control. And the next check is pitcher batting, which he is not. So the 2-3-6 says it's a base on balls or a walk for Yastrzemski to start the inning. So that starts out with a... Leadoff runner on base, and that brings up the boomer, George Scott. Scott on the day, two for three, with two runs scored. And we'll see what he can do with Yastrzemski at first. And he rolls a two, four, six. So a two, four, six control is asking for. And Tidro has the control feature. So it is a ground out to the pitcher, and on a lead die of two, the ground out is a fielder's choice to the infielder of our choice. Uh, actually, it's a, in, it's a ground out to the pitcher, so we're going to say that the second baseman, Randolph, was covering. So it's a 1-4 ground out and a fielder's choice for the boomer George Scott. So he replaces Yastrzemski at first base with one out. And that brings up Dewey Evans. Dewey Evans is up as the Red Sox hold on to a 7-4 to four lead. Here is the pitch. 2-2-4 two, two, with the decider die as a yes. 2-2-4. Two, 2-2-4 two, four. Two, two, four says pitching at home. Tidrow is pitching at home because we are in Yankee Stadium. Pitching at home is a pop out to the shortstop. So gets Evans to pop it up. Two away. And that brings up third baseman Butch Hobson. So Butch Hobson is up with Scott at second base, two outs. And we'll see what Hobson can do. It is a one, two, four with the cider die as a yes. One, two, four is asking about control. And Dick Tidro has control, doesn't need the side or die. He already has it. So it's a ground out to the shortstop. So that will end the inning as Hobson grounds out to Dent. And we now go to the bottom of the eighth with the score, Red Sox 7, Yankees 4. Okay, bottom of the eighth. And Bob Stanley is the new Red Sox pitcher. And he will be facing Reggie Jackson to start the inning. It'll be Jackson, Pinella, and Nettles due up. So let's see what Reggie can do to lead off the eighth inning. We get a 3-5-6 with no decider die. So a 3-5-6, same. It's asking, is Reggie Jackson the same handedness as Stanley? He is not. Reggie's a lefty. Stanley's a righty. So we skip by that. Utility or sad sack? Reggie is neither one of those. So it's a single down the first or third base line. So 
a base hit leadoff single for Reggie Jackson. Maybe the Yankees might have something going here. Here is Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella, sweet Lou. And the roll is 2-4-4 with no decider die. 2-4-4 four, four is asking, is the pitcher an ace? Bob Stanley is not an ace. So we go over and says, is the batter a champion? Is the batter a champion? Lou Pinella is a champion, semi-champion, but the decider die says he is not a champion in this at bat. So it is a ground out to the shortstop under the 2-4-4 four, four roll. And on the lead die of a two, it is a fielder's choice. So it is a 6-4 ground out with a fielder's choice. So Lou Pinella now replaces Reggie at first base. One out. And Greg Nettles. Batter. Greg Nettles. Facing Bob Stanley. And the roll is 4-5-5 five, five with no decider die. 4-5-5 five, five asks, is the pitcher a workman? Stanley is not a workman. The next ask is, is the batter patient? Greg Nettles is not patient. So it says ground out to first base. So a ground out to first base with a lead uh, four. Ground out to first base with a lead of four. Runner advances one base on ground outs. So in this case, Nettles grounds out to the first baseman, George Scott, unassisted for four out number two. Pinella advances to second on that ground out. So he is in scoring position with two outs for Willie Randolph. Willie Randolph. So Randolph is up. And we'll see what Randolph can do against Bob Stanley. Roll is a 1-3-4 with no decider die. 1-3-4. It's asking, is the catcher gold? Catcher, in this case, Carlton Fisk is semi-gold. Decider die says he is not gold in this instance. So we move on. 1-3-4 asks, is the batter a champion? He is not a champion. So we go to outfield drama. All right, outfield drama. We roll two dice and the decider die. And we'll see what happens. And the roll is a 1-3 with the decider die, yes. It asks, is the center fielder iron? Center fielder iron. Fred Lynn is not iron nor gold, so he's neutral. So he is not iron. So the check is, if he was iron, it would be a single. But in this case, it is a lunging catch. So Fred Lynn makes one of his lunging catches to end the inning. And now we go to the ninth. With the score, Red Sox 7, Yankees 4. Okay, top of the ninth, Denny Doyle to lead things off for the Red Sox. The Yankees have brought in Sparky Lyle to try to keep this thing close. Tidro went two and two-thirds innings, walked one, struck out three, did not give up anything else. So now we have a lefty on lefty matchup, Denny Doyle. Sparky Lyle is already an ace. He is now a double ace since it's the first at bat of the game for him. Facing Denny Doyle. And the at bat is, if I don't drop this, is 4-4-4. Four, four, four. How about that? Three fours in a row, but no decider die. So 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Ask, is the batter a scrapper? He is. Denny Doyle is a scrapper, so it is a single to left field based on 4-4-4, four, 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 scrapper, single to left field. So Denny Doyle leads off with a single. He fought off a tough pitch from Sparky Lyle. And now we're back to the top of the order and Rick Burleson. So we'll see what Burleson can do. Roll is a 1-2-4 with the decider die. One, two, four is asking, does the pitcher have control? Sparky Lyle is a control pitcher. 
so it's a ground out to short. When the lead dies a one, that is a double play. So we have a six, four, four, three, double play. So that here is two quick outs on the board, and Fred Lynn is up with two outs and the base is empty. Fred Lynn. Fred Lynn rolls a two, four, five with the decider die. Two, four, five. The pitcher is blank in that choice. So we go to whether the batter is a hero or not. Fred Lynn is not a hero. So he pops out to second base for the third out. It's in red, but there is no next at bat. So simply pop out to Willie Randolph to end the half inning. Zero there. So the score after eight and a half, Boston seven, Yankees four. Okay, we're ready for the bottom of the ninth. Bill Campbell, the Red Sox closer, has entered the ball game. Bob Stanley pitched a one inning, gave up a hit, nothing else. So we go to the bottom of the ninth with the closer Bill Campbell in the game. Bucky Dent, the scheduled leadoff hitter, but Billy Martin has called him back to the dugout, and Carlos May has stepped in to pinch hit for Dent in the ninth. So we'll see what Carlos May can do against closer Bill Campbell. Here's the pitch. Three, five, five with no decider die. Three, five, five. Struggler. Obviously, he's not a struggler because he's an ace, first batter in, so that doesn't fly. So the next option is champion. Is Carlos May a champion? He is not. So he grounds to second. So Carlos May fails in his pinch hitting duties. He is out. One away. And now we're back to the top of the order and Mickey Rivers. That Sox two outs away from getting this victory. The pitch is a 1-1-3 one, one, with no decider die. So a 1-1-3. One, one, and it asks, is Campbell an ace? He would have been if it was his first batter, but he's not an ace. He is a star with flash quality, but not an ace. It asks, is the next batter a slugger? Mickey Rivers is a slap hitter, not a slugger. So the last option is single to center field. So Mickey Rivers with a one-out single. And that'll bring up Roy White. And down by three, we're not going to try to steal with Mickey Rivers, even though he's fast. His run really doesn't matter whether he's on first or second because they're down by three. He's got to come all the way around to score anyway. Here's Roy White. And Roy White, all fives with no decider die. So all fives. It's asking ace or star. And Bill Campbell is a star. There's a star quality. So that is a deep fly out to right field. For the second out of the inning. So White just misses putting one out of the yard. And now the Yankees are down to their final hope. And that final hope is the team captain, Thurman Munson. Team captain Thurman Munson facing Campbell. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. And the roll, whoops, the roll is, let's fix this. Roll is two three five with the decider die. So two three five with the decider die. It's asking is the pitcher wild? Is the pitcher wild? Nope, Bill Campbell is not wild. So we go to the next one. Is the batter eager? Is the batter eager? Munson is semi eager. Semi eager. Decider die says he is eager. So we do take this particular uh, entry, and the eagerness says that he singles through the shortstop. So Munson with a single, and let's see here, runner advances one base. So Munson singles, Rivers moves to second, and all of a sudden the tying run 
is at the plate and it's the designated hot batter, Chris Chambliss. So this ought to be interesting. Bill Campbell facing Chris Chambliss, who is the tying run. He's already tripled in the fourth inning, tripled and scored. He's one for four. So let's see what Chambliss can do here. The roll is a 4-4-5 four, four, with the decider die. 4-4-5 four, four, with the decider die. 4-4-5 four, four, asks, is the pitcher a workman? Campbell is not. So it asks, is the batter patient? And Chris Chambliss is not. So we go to a ground out to the first baseman, George Scott. And the ball game is over. So the Boston Red Sox hang on and defeat the New York Yankees by the final score of 7-4. to four. For the Red Sox, seven runs on nine hits, and there were no errors. For the Yankees, four runs on 12 hits and no errors. Yankees left a lot of runners on base. Let me see how they left them on base here. We've got uh, one left on there, and we've got two, three left on, four left on, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine left on for the Yankees. For the Red Sox, they left on one, two, three, four. They only left four runners on base. So the Red Sox did a very good job of cashing in. So there's your final score. 7 9 0 for the Red Sox. 4 12 0 for the Yankees. Winning pitcher was Bill Lee, the spaceman. And he gets the victory. Ed Figueroa, starting pitcher, got knocked around for seven runs in five and a third. He takes the loss. And Bill Campbell with the scoreless ninth, albeit a shaky ninth, picks up the save. So I hope everybody enjoyed that little demonstration on History Maker Baseball. And uh, the umpires in this game, unfortunately, or fortunately having a look at it, uh, none of the roles came up to check, to do an umpire check. So they were transparent in this game, didn't even know they were there. They had no effect whatsoever. Uh, the stadium, Yankee Stadium, no roles came up for the stadium check either. So that did not come into play. It was just uh, solid hitting by the Red Sox and some shaky pitching by Ed Figueroa that caused the Red Sox to come away with a 7-4 to victory. Uh, I'm looking forward to History Makers Baseball's 2015 release coming up, I believe, in about a week. Either the PDF version or the regular card version. Uh, either war, I'm sure, it will be fine. Uh, over 1,000 cards from what I understand, so it's going to be a lot of players involved. Looking forward to that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to call it a night and uh, wrap everything up here and clean everything up here. And I hope you enjoyed a little taste of History Maker Baseball to maybe whet your appetite for what's coming. Or, and if you're not familiar with this game, like I said, there are other videos uh, that's more of a how-to and breaks down all the features and whatnot of the game, I would definitely check that out. Have a good night, and we'll talk to everybody later.